He was one of the craziest people that I had ever met. When I say that though, I mean he was one of the people in my life that I considered to be the most similar to me. The sheer amount of style, interests, and thought processes we had in common even before we had met or became friends continues to baffle me to this day. Thinking about the amount of things we could have had in common had circumstances not pulled us away from each other also sometimes makes me sad, but it also gives me hope in the people around me just because I had the pleasure of being his friend. His impact on my life consists of a very select few situations that despite their transience still affect me to this very day and cause me to appreciate the people I have. We first met in lunch class of my sophomore year. Finding good friends in my school had so far been a challenge. It became increasingly imperative as I realized that the majority of my friends were seniors this year. Though I had seen him around and he looked interesting and like someone I'd be interested in meeting, I had never gotten the chance to speak with him until this time. He wore many band t-shirts similar to mine and eventually a jacket resembling mine given to him by my friend John Owen. We first became friends because we would always find ourselves endlessly arguing and yelling at each other about certain subjects I have strong radical feelings in such as politics, philosophy, and religion, only to find out that we agreed on every subject. He simply loved to play a devil's advocate, which had him and I yelling at each other pointlessly the whole time because I tend to get very riled up with discussion about those specific subjects. At one point, I completely disregarded all of my friends sitting around me and could only focus on Connor and our in-depth discussion of whether society would ever be able to work for the overall benefit of one another. This was a major idea that both of us acknowledged despite our disputes. I was held up in fa utter fascination that there was another similar person to me at this school which I had mostly written off as rich, spoiled kids with no care for much more than high school football. Another major connection we shared was through our musical tastes. Two of our favorite artists were Perfect Circle and Acid Bath. Acid Bath specifically was my all-time favorite band throughout middle school. They are a very obscure metal band, so I am always quite surprised when someone I meet is familiar with them. Most people that liked them were shown introduced to them by me. Connor had a slight obsession with these artists and their lyrics, so I became curious as to how he was introduced to the band in the first place. When he informed me that his girlfriend Lindsay had shown them to him, it all became clear. I had indirectly shown Connor to his favorite artist, and neither of, us even, neither of us even knew it until he told me that. He also ended up showing me some punk bands that I still listen to to this day. As every day passes by since his death, new meanings to some of my favorite acid bath and the perfect circle songs arise, and the whole meaning behind the band's music that I connected to has transformed into something new, despite the songs themselves staying the same. Two of the last vivid and important memories I have of him are first when I ran into him walking down the street one night. We stopped and started talking, and the next thing I knew we were delving into another crazed philosophical discussion. Hours passed with us simply standing in the same spot on the sidewalk, talking with no regard to anything else. The sun eventually went down and it became dark, but we paid no mind at the time. He explained to me all of his unusual religious beliefs about Anki and his belief that only a select few people in this world have a soul. I am not a religious person, but his belief showed me another side of faith I had never seen before. This memory of him is the most important one I have because it shows it shows that when we got together we could connect and talk for hours and not even realize it. The other memory I have is when I was at the public park near my house that I used to go to every day. I saw Connor and spent time with him and my other friends. He told me about how he was moving to Tennessee soon. Little did I know this would be the last time I ever saw him. Soon after he moved, I received a text message from his sister saying that he had passed away. Then I found out he had taken his own life. I took this news very hard and it plagued me for a long time. Now I've taken the loss as a personal test of strength, and it has definitely made me a stronger and more appreciative person.